have we, blacks and whites in America specifically? Why have we not come together? What has kept us apart? I think institutions that have traditionally found their favor with, 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 with social goals that are benefited by races being apart. I think that, you know, Dr. King once said to me, he said, you know, it is possible for me to perhaps do something that could eliminate racism and never put a dent in poverty. But if I could eliminate poverty, I would necessarily set the most powerful force for the elimination of racism. Because I think the practice of race difference, the practice of race animosity, is directly connected to the economic well-being of peoples all over the world. And if we could eliminate that fact, we could reshape economic uh, definitions, if we could find a way to redistribute the wealth of this planet and put it into the hands of people where they could find decency and find, and, and, and find harmony in their daily experience, I think that we'd eliminate racism, sexism, and a whole lot of others. The last thing Dr. King ever said to me five days, as a matter of fact, before he was murdered, was he was at my home, we just finished a strategy meeting on the Poor People's Campaign. <coughs> And he seemed quite agitated after what we thought was a very successful gathering and discussion. And he said to me, I said, what's the, what's the matter, Martin? You seem very agitated. He said, well, I am. Because I've come upon a thought that I don't know how to deal with at this moment. I said, well, what is it? He says, we fought long for integration. It looks like we're going to get it. I think we get the laws. He says, but I'm afraid that I've come upon something I don't know quite what to do with. I'm afraid that we're integrating into a burning house. And when we asked for further clarification, Andy Young was with me at that time, my wife, others. <laughs> he said, America's lost whatever little moral vision it had. Its moral sense has, it, it has run away from the nation. And a nation that is not governed by morality and moral principles is a nation that's headed for an abyss. And I think black people have been struggling to get into this system, maybe getting into a system that in the final analysis is a Sodom and Gomorrah, will not work because it's selfish goals, it's need for profit, it's need for supremacy, it's need to be the best, has clouded its moral vision. And with no moral vision, no nation can be healthy enough to lead its people anywhere except to, to, to destruction. I can't remember a time in my life, I'm 68 years old, and I cannot remember a time in my life when I've ever seen white men, white male Americans, as angry as they are today. I mean, really, they're in a rage, albeit that it sits in some places quiet, but it's there, it's being, it's being described by the politicians who are running for office on the platform they run. It's also being reflected by the fact that, you know, Oklahoma City, when that federal building was bombed by those white men, wasn't about black folk, that's white on white. Why are these men so violent? Why are they so angry? And the conclusion was that if you live in America, where you've invested in the dream and you are white, and you said, I'm going to put my little money aside, I'm going to put my, 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 my retirement aside, I'm going to have this little plot of land, I'm going to do this, do that, my IRS, my, 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 my Social Security, etc., etc., etc. And you wake up one day and somebody says to you, well, your Social Security is going to be no more. That retirement plan that you had saved up for was stolen in the SNL scam. All those jobs that you had in those institutions that you love, 36,000 of you have just been fired. Then I won't blame Harris Belafonte and black people for reverse discrimination taking my job. There you go. And we're out of time.